Hi everybody, it's Hope um, and or Hopeified, which is my username that I made when I was 13 and I was a little bit of a narcissist, so I apologize if you were like, I've been Hopeified, excuse you? Anyways, so I went on this little adventure slash explore slash try not to fall down in rocks adventure today at Point Pleasant Park, which is a park that is like a little drive from my house, like a long drive from my house. Um, and there was this really cool island there, and my grandfather knows like everything in my in my brain. I just think that like he knows the answer to everything, and he does. Like I haven't been proven wrong yet. Um, and so he was telling me about this island that I just this is just a really quick story here. Uh, he told me of this island called Devil's Island. I was like, somebody must have done something wrong to have an island named Devil's Island. And so he told me that apparently, he didn't know all the story. If anybody knows the story, they should tell me or I'm probably just going to Google it. But um, he told me about this island called Devil's Island and it apparently was haunted. And the story was that there was two, um, a husband and a wife who lived on it and controlled the lighthouse that like helped the ships come in in case you don't know what a lighthouse is. Um, and what was really cool was that, this wasn't cool, he died, the guy died, husband died, which is sad, but the wife remarried, and this is the cool part, um, the wife remarried, and apparently the old husband wore these really heavy work boots, and so the new husband slash new guy in the story, um, would put on his normal shoes to go outside, and every time he put them on, he would trip like they were really heavy and he wasn't expecting it. And so, I thought that that was really cool, creepy, I don't know if that's the whole story, I'm sure it's not, and I would really, really like to know more about it, actually, I'd like to be on it, I think that'd be really cool, and do some ghost adventures, because I think that'd be cool. And then, I went to Japanese Paradise, which is this amazing store that is just amazing. So I bought some candies and I was like, why not make a video about this? Because what else am I going to do with my life? Um, and so here I am making the video. So I bought a lot, well not a lot, but I bought some really cute candy. But I also should start with the thing that isn't candy since it's not... I don't want to like break the record. So it's this beauteous fan. Like it's honestly the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. The back is beautiful too. It's just like, I don't know what kind of ink it is. And I think it's kanji written on it. It's really hard to see. I know. Um, I don't know what it says. I wish I would have asked her what it said. But um, Chimoko, store owner, was really nice. She didn't laugh at my bad Japanese skills. So I mean... That's really nice in my box. And so, yeah, I have a fan, and I'm like, a fan of myself off. Ooh, ooh. I, I probably won't use this in real life. I wish I could. I wish it was socially acceptable to use fans here in where I live, Canada. Yeah, no. We should work on this, Canada. Anyways, the first candy type thing I bought was these little rolls called... Uh, honestly, I just think I know... I think they're called Baum Roll, like B-A-U-M Roll, and so I opened them up, and I already tried one of these, so I'm not going to try it again, because honestly, it's probably one or two thumbs, because I'm not one for like cakey type flavors, but it looks and feels like Play-Doh or gummy candy and then you take a bite and suddenly the texture like changes into cakey texture and it tastes like cake and it's kind of awesome and that was the first candy thing that I bought uh, the next candy thing I bought was these there's no name that is in English I wish I knew the English name if anybody can read this read reading are you reading anyways there's just this lovely little um, little guy on here he's just He's a lumberjack, I guess. Yeah, he's a lumberjack. Smoking bubbles. Um, he's smoking bubbles in the back. Uh, I hope it's bubbles. 
I hope it's bubbles, Mr. Lumber Lumberjack. I don't want you encouraging smoking on my channel. And he cut down all these delicious treats for us. And I will show you what they look like in better detail. So this is what they look like. And they're really cute. It's kind of like the tree stump and then the dirt around it acts as a chocolate. And they're delicious. I give them a thousand thumbs out of two. Um, because they are so delicious. The next thing I bought was... Ha ha. Oh, there is English on this. Uh, Koala's March. And it is freaking adorable. Okay? The lighting is really bad in here, so you can't really see it. But they are just little koala cookies. And when I take one out, you're going to understand. You're going to be like, oh, I totally get this now. Because the thing that's cute about them. My grandfather told me they looked like dog biscuits. And I was like, take it back. Um, is that each one has, like, and I've had multiple of them. Each one has a little koala. And he is doing a task on them. So like this one, he looks like he is about to eat. And I'm about to eat him, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Mr. Koala. Yeah, and they're like these cookie um, type things that have chocolate inside and it's delicious. Any hoosers, and not even like gonna lie, if you don't know what Pocky is, get out. I'm kidding. Don't get out. Please stay because I really would love you to stay. Um, but I got some Pocky and I've already eaten Pocky before. So this was kind of not not exciting but kind of still exciting because it was like authentic Pocky. Not the stuff in my grocery store. Um, and I got my regular chocolate Pocky and I got Almond Crush. Oh yeah. Delicious. I should probably explain the Pocky in case somebody doesn't know what Pocky is. Um, they're like these biscuit sticks and they're chocolate coated. So these are just milk chocolate and these ones have almonds and chocolate on them. I'm excited to try them because I love almonds. Next thing I purchased, what, oh, last thing I purchased technically is Milkita. And it's strawberry milk cup candy and there's these adorable cows on the back. Do you see this? He is the cutest thing ever. Yeah, so and these are just like strawberry filled gummies that taste like milk also. I I really there's not a good explanation. They're individually wrapped. Oh can I open it? Can I open it? I can open it. Yes I can. Oh, it's not cutely shaped. It's just a glob. It's just cow poo. <laughs> um, and... Mm -hmm. I give it 1.5 if you like milk and strawberry. I don't like that combination. I never have. But they taste really good and this just stuck in my mouth. So, it's gone. So, yeah, and I'm definitely cutting out the footage of me eating this really sticky candy. And the really cool thing about this store was, um, Tomoko, she said, like, with every purchase, you got a free book. And it was a second hand book, but still, like, books are expensive. So, most of them were in Japanese, and unfortunately, I was a sucker, and I got an English one. I was gonna get the Japanese fashion magazine, because I thought it looked really cool, but I actually got one called uh, The Return Journey, and I was attracted due to the backstory. It's just these powerful, poignant tales, New York Times bestselling author, blah, 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 blah. Um, it just kind of is like a story of, of love, loss, husbands and wives, daughters and strangers, sons and lovers. Yeah, so I'm, I was attracted to the wording. That's definitely not how she worded it, but it like, is kind of close um, to that. And I was like, free book? Heck yes.